need help. Who has the courage to protect our brave fellow on his journey? I'll go with him. Ah, Migos. Excellent choice. I'll go. No, not Bunkar. He's the best warrior in the village. We need him here. Bunkar, step back. Welcome to the Infernal Brotherhood's Willow series. Today we're going to answer the question, who is Vonkar? We'd like to invite you to subscribe to this channel for more Willow content and like and share the video. This information is taken from the Willow Sourcebook. Warriors in Nelwyn villages were a hereditary role. They weren't usually addressed or acknowledged. They were necessary only when trouble was around. Otherwise, they were ignored for most intents and purposes. Vonkar's father, Mergondo, was a captain of the guard, but also a self-pitying drunk who was prone to wanderlust. He would beat his son in his drunken haze, and one night, as he was trying to teach his son how to fight, he clubbed him onto the ground, berating him, and his mother, Solia, stabbed his father in the neck with a dagger to stop him from killing Vonkar. Mergondo ran into the forest, clutching his neck, and was never seen again. There wasn't even a funeral for him. Solia didn't want Vonkar to be like his father, Mergondo, so she taught him to be a better man. Solia would suffer from sleepwalking, ending up dangerously close to the river Freen every few weeks, without any knowledge of how she got there. One morning, she wasn't home, and the farmers near the river hadn't seen her. She just seemed to disappear. They held a funeral for her. The High Aldwin would tell the Nelwyn children about the fabulous kingdom of Tir Islin, and Vonkar would dream about it. Now an orphan, he would fantasize about visiting the great castle. His aunt and uncle would take him in, and he liked them well enough, but his father's penchant for wanderlust began burning in his veins. One spring day he left north, staying off the roads and traveling through pastures to stay away from Daikini's. He eventually discovered the inland sea to the west and gazed wondrously at the western coastal cliffs. He was more confident approaching Daikini, and the riders of the western steppes found him fascinating. Their knowledge of Tirislin had devolved to legend, and they believed it lay somewhere in the north beyond their trade routes. Vonkar would ride with the nomads, defending them from the Poha as they attacked, acquitting himself with honor. He didn't enjoy battle, but he wasn't afraid or incapable either. He traveled to the fields of Nokmar, heard the distant rumblings of volcanoes, and witnessed the cesspool of the river Troon. Saddened, he admitted to failing to find Tirislin and desired to return to his Nelwyn Valley. He took refuge in a cave during a particularly nasty winter blizzard. He was freezing to death and gave in to sleep. He dreamed of being woken by slender, pale, bright-eyed elves. The men had pointed beards, and they told Vonkar that his battle was not yet over. They draped him in furs and guided him to a mountain view of Nokmar, showing him the castle that dwelt there. They revealed that evil times were approaching and that he was needed to fight, that he should return to his village in order to help. They gifted him a silver ring, a token of faith in Tirislin. When he woke, he was covered in furs. The journey home after three years' wandering was vastly different. He stopped in every Nelwyn village, delighting in his tales of people, places, and events he experienced. By the time he returned home to his village, he was met with open arms and praises from his neighbors, friends, and villagers. The High Aldwin approached him, welcoming him home, and asked what they could do for him. He replied that he would like to be a warrior and protect the village. He took up his inherited position of commander and faced the darkest times any Nelwyn could recall with the evil of Bavmorda spreading across the land. He would escort Willow and Migosh to the Daikini crossroads in an effort to protect them and give Laura Dannon back to her own kind. And he wished to stay with them. But the prefect Burglecut would not allow it, and demanded he return to the town to protect the people. And that is all I have to say about Vonkar. Thank you for spending time with us. We would like to invite you to subscribe to this channel, and feel free to click the like button and share the video with others. 
Until the Infernal Brotherhood convenes again, my fellow scruffy-looking nerf herders, may the Force be with you. All this expedition needs is a leader. And according to the bones, that leader is you, Burglecut. Bunker!